Hey guys, welcome to Camouflage Pattern Creation Tutorial. We will be using Substance Designer to create three types of camouflage. First one will be woodland, second one will be pixelated, and the third one will be desert. And in the last video, I will take a look at how you can create different types of patterns using the same system that we utilized with military type of camouflage. So a little bit about me, um, my name is Max Kutsenko, I'm currently working as a material artist at Ubisoft and I love using Substance Designer to create uh, my materials in a procedural way. Okay, let's get started. So the first pattern will be Woodland. Uh, so I gathered some references here. I'm using uh, Pure Ref uh, for reference gathering, which I find it really it's a really nice software. I highly recommend. So this is what I have for Camo Woodland, and um, we will try to recreate uh, this type of pattern. I'm using for for color palette. I'm using a website which is called uh, Skim Color. You can check it out. Um, I find it really nice. Uh, if you go here and then if you type in any of the keywords, it will give you uh, various color palettes. So for instance, if I type in Woodland, here I already have it. Right, this is what you get here. So it offers you uh, some combination. So what I ended up using, I think was um, US Woodland Camouflage Pattern, this one. And basically I did it for all of my patterns that we're going to create, okay? All right, so let's jump into designer. And here, I'm just gonna use it on a cube. Okay, so what we're going to do is go to roughness and I'm just gonna reduce the shine since we don't need anything shiny here. And I'm going to be using base color for pattern generation, nothing else really. Right, so let's get started. So the first, um, first thing I'm going to do is select one of the noises. Uh, through, our, through experimentation, I found out that um, clouds was um, the best selection in, the, in this case. So, um, Actually, any of these three uh, will work fine. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, personal preferences. Uh, but let's, for example, start with Clouds 1. All right, so we have Clouds 1. And we're going to do is uh, first create, we're going to blend um, two uniform colors together, All right? As if we for if, for example, we analyze this uh, photo here, we have here green, brown, and then some kind of creamy and black, right? So we can choose, for example, first blend, let's say uh, green and this uh, creamy color. And then we will um, we'll do the rest. We will do brown and black, okay? So let's go for these two. So. In this case, then I'm going to choose um, uniform color, and then I will duplicate it by pressing Control D to uniform colors. Okay, and then now I'm going to color pick um, from my reference. So I would just just drop it here, and then. I will pick from the scheme color, right? So for now, if we don't like it later on, we can always adjust the colors. You can also go to Google, just put um, 
a woodland camouflage pattern in Google and it will give you lots of results like in here and you can also color pick from these pictures. All right, so I press pick here and I'm picking first, let's say this green, all right. And then I'm picking This one, kind of beige creamy. Okay. And then we go for blend. So blend these two and output goes to the base color. Right. So let's create a mask to separate this, um, to create this pattern. Okay. So we click on the cloud and then what I'm going to do is um, apply a um, histogram scan to create a mask. So in histogram scan, I will increase the contrast to one. And then with the moving the position slider, that will give me a binary mask. Okay. So now I'm going to connect it into Capacity, all right. This is what we have. So we, if we move position, we increase the the amount of whites here. And at the moment, it's a I would say it's a high frequency uh, noise. So we would like to we it'll, it'll be good to reduce it. And to reduce the high frequency, I will apply um, a blur HQ noise, right? So by default, it's got an intensity of 10, but if I drop it down, you will be able to control uh, the frequency of the noise, okay? So the higher the intensity, the the bigger, the, let's say, the chunkier, bigger, bigger the shapes are in this case. And we can also go to, to Cloud1 and um, play with the disorder to change the disorder of the noise and um, also increase the scale of that. Me personally, I would like to increase the scale a bit, let's say. Just uh, pick three, for example. And also increase the position, right? So we start to get the results um, similar to what we see in here with this kind of, um, um, say, wavy, wavy spots, right? So then once we blended these two together, we just, we, we're going to continue with um, another two because there are four colors in total in our reference. What I'm going to do is select this and just um, duplicate it with Control D. And I'm going to repeat the process now, just um, color picking from from my reference, all right? So what we got left is this brown and then the kind of like a dark, dark green or black. So select this, pick, pick that. All right, this is the brown. And then we pick this black. Okay, so let's blend now the, the third, the same way, so blend. This dark brown will go to our foreground. And now we need to create another mask. So basically we're going to repeat the same process. Uh, there are several options of doing this. Uh, one is you could, uh, you could duplicate clouds one. Um, you could do that, but I would advise you just to reuse uh, the same 
the same noise and go for a transformation to D to slightly just just to offset it on the side and this way um, all your masks will be driven by one single note so which will help us in the end to create a variation I'll show you at the end so what I'm going to do is I'm using transformation to D I'm putting in opacity right and then now I'm going to just offset it to the side so that these spots are in different location now all right so they're here let's say in here okay so we get that then we do exactly the same with the last uniform color blend you can just control d with the dark one here and this one will go to um to a different direction oh you can even use horizontal mirror or vertical mirror in this case let's say let's say vertical mirror it just flips it and then you move it again to create variation All right so now we we set up this system here and um the great thing about it is uh, if we want to now make any adjustments if let's say we go to cloud swan right we control the scale here right and since we're using the same noise it affects the whole uh, woodland pattern create a disorder We can also uh, play with uh, different settings with blur to create maybe a slightly more spotty look or, or less, less spotty. Then we can also play with histogram scan with a, with a position slider, All right? We can adjust the colors uh, individually in here. We can also, let's say, if we select this, uh, these two uh, connectors and we press um, short keys X, if you press X, right, we can change the look. It just basically swaps the foreground and background like this. Go back. Okay, and then what else we can do? We can replace um, clouds with, um, let's say, clouds two or three. In my experience, uh, clouds, if you want to recreate this type of noise, um, uh, clouds is probably the best note to achieve this look. But you can experiment with, experiment with others, with other noises. Um, it's all about experimentation. So, if I pre if I put clouds two in here, obviously, um, as you can see, the final result changes quite a lot because clouds two's got uh, different frequencies here. It's more blurry already by default, and we also playing blur after that. So we need to make some adjustments then in this case. So, say maybe we could increase the scale of it right and then we go to blur hq and you can reduce reduce the intensity of the blur and also a position of the histogram scan so we can increase for example scale of clouds Right, then we play with the position and also the blur.
You can also do the same with Clouds 3 to see how it reacts. Um, also looking at the at these references, I noticed that um, some of them, some of the photos, and this pattern in particular had like a horizontal look to it, like as if these spots were stretched horizontally. We can also reproduce that in uh, Substance Designer. If you go to um, Clouds 2 Noise, right? And then in here, in Base Parameters, where you see Output Size, Width and High. At the moment, I have it at 2K. But if um, you move the resolution of Width, so this is a slider, right? So if I move it back here, right? What it does is it stretches um, horizontally my pattern, right? And the more you move, the more it stretches it like this. Okay, the same happens with high. So it just does it vertically. So you can do, for example, you just move it slightly, minus one, for instance, to achieve this kind of horizontal look. Okay. So, and another thing that we can do at the end is like when you see once we blended all these uniform colors together, um, it's always going to be like the last blend will be the most dominant. Say so in my case, it's going to be this black, dark green, or whatever. Right, so it's the most dominant because it's the last blend that I apply on top. So it feels like it just you overlay it, and yeah, if you look at this um, pattern, maybe you wouldn't notice, but uh, actually I do. <laughs> I notice it that it's kind of it kind of takes over the rest of the of the pattern. So in order to uh, combat that, what we can do is. Take this uh, last mask that we used, right? Uh, use a blend. And we could use one of the previously made masks, first mask or the second mask. And we can uh, subtract it from the final one, right? So just to give you an example, I take the second mask, for instance, right? I connect it in here. And then blending mode, I change to subtract. All right, so I do that. As you can see, like now, um, this is the what we had before in here, and this is after blend. You see, so it kind of subtracts some of the overlapping parts uh, from this blend. So, so we can actually see, like, if you if you press on this blend and then you go for Shift and D to disable this operation. All right, this is. Uh, before and this is after okay you can also try with this one see just plug the first note as well so you see this in this case uh, we achieved this kind of look i think it's looking a little bit more more natural right and then yeah just keep um your colors they don't need to be exactly the same as mine just you can always adjust them a little bit based on, on your personal preference. And the good thing about it is here, we can play a lot with the look, with the final look by just moving the, the scale, disorder, um, blur, blurring it, right? To create this kind of look. And also playing with histogram. Okay. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one and then I'll see you on the on the second pattern, which will be a pixelated look. I already have one uniform color hooked here to the base color, so let's duplicate it. To have four. And we're going to repeat the process that we did in the first video. Okay. And we will sample it from here. So we're going to do the pick and do it for each one of them. So they're already prepared. So 
Sweet. Okay. And now we're creating a blend. This white seems to be way too strong, so I'm going to drop it down a bit. Black as well, I'm going to raise it. Okay. So we're going to start we going to start with the same noise, which is clouds, clouds 1 in this case. Okay, and then followed by a histogram scan. The process is quite similar to what we've done in the first video. However, there's some slight change though. Um, now, let's increase the contrast of the histogram scan and increase the position. This is what we get now. Just going to replace this node for now with the gray so we have a better visibility here on the screen. Okay, that's better. And so what we need to achieve, this is the cloudy look, but we want pixels, right? Kind of like a Tetris thing. Um, so what we're going to do now is go to histogram scan and um, we will drop the resolution of this node. So what we're going to do is drop it to, let's say, maybe minus three or four. Let's see. You see, we dropped the resolution. You can see it here to 128 by 128 from 2K. And um, by dropping it, you see what happens is we can actually see all these individual pixels. And this is what we need. However, um, if you look at the viewport, it's it looks really blurry, right? This is not what we want. Um, so to to solve that, to to get the sharpness back, what we need to do is apply a transformation node after. Okay. When we apply that, you see the the transformation inherited the resolution of the histogram scan, which is 128. But we want to get back to our uh, 2048 resolution here. Um, so if we click on transformation and we go to output size, we just need to change the to the option that's called relative to parent. Okay. Once I, it's going to be relevant to to my basically to my graph resolution which is at 2k if i press that it should come back okay so now we are we're getting back however it's still blurry so one last thing i left to do here is if we scroll down in transformation and go to the filtering right so we check here at the moment by default be linear however if we switch to nearest right we get the sharpness back. I believe I discovered the I discovered this by accident, if I remember it correctly. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it was probably an accident. But yeah, it was um, by changing the filtering mode, we get the sharpness back here. Okay. And now what we can do is go back to clouds, and then now we can, you know. Increase the dis change the disorder or scale like before, or even if we want to stretch it horizontally, like we did with the first one, as you can see here, like you see in here, this small horizontal look to the pixels. Again, we just need to play with the resolution of this node. You see, so this is a stretch again. You can get some pretty interesting results if you go all the way back. But let's keep it at minus one here for now. Okay, and now we're going to repeat the, the whole process again. So we create again the blend. I'll go quicker than this time since we already done this before. This one I might choose completely different color. Let's see. Because this white I already have something similar. Let's see, maybe I could pick this bluish blue tone. Connect here. 
And again, I'm duplicating the, the mask, the transformation, and simply again, I'm, I'm creating an offset here. So let's see. I'll place it somewhere in here, let's say. And then the process repeats with the last color. Transformation. Apply here. A horizontal mirror, for instance. Place it here. Okay. This color might be strong can sample it. Say we got we can pick this one here. Gonna adjust it a little bit the values. Let's just get the saturation a bit, something like this. Okay. And then with the histogram scan, we can increase the frequency here or scale, right? Again, the, the last layer here is going to be the dominant one. So we can do the same trick by subtracting one of the previously made masks from this. Subtract so it's not taking over, right? And then in here, again, we can simply replace replace um, this chain that we have made with uh, another cloud's noise to create different kind of um, look, if you will. Here you go. See, I'm just adjusting type of pixelation you see you just put another clouds here and you will get different look see in here you have kind of like those islands of pixels could you can also work for you yeah just keep trying different combination see what you can come up with so yeah here you go these are the pixelated camo all right, so now we are creating a desert pattern, which is this one, and it's going to be uh, more complex to create. You'll see uh, it's got more more elements to it. So first we uh, we will work on the larger shapes, um, like this one here, and then we will have to separate it um into two colors which is like darker and um, lighter tone and and then we also have those little you see the little like islands of um there were pebbles right or some kind of animal prints around and um, but well what's um a little bit more complicated about it is that um if you if you look at it closely it's um it also starts with a bigger shape and then we have smaller shapes that is uh, scattered around it, like forming like little islands, you know. So we will try our best to recreate this um, this type of pattern. As is, if you, if you look at the references, it's, there are all sorts of uh, variations here, but um, I really like this one. Um, so let's jump into it. Okay, we're in designer and the we will begin the process in a similar way as before. All right. You already know the drill. We will get the uniform colors in advance. All right, let's say four. There might be five in this graph. And we will start with um, one of the clouds again. So start with a... Um, Clouds too. Okay, might increase the scale. 
followed by scan, histogram scan. Raising the contrast. Okay. And now we're going to blend two colors. So let's see, the, um, the first one will be uh, this background color, which is kind of creamy yellowish. So let's pick it. All right. And the second will be the brown. We connect them together. And we blend that, all right? So now these large shapes, they are quite, you can see they are wavy, but they maintain the shape. Uh, they don't have high frequencies, so we like I do in here. So we want to uh, eliminate that. Let's see if we could go through scale. Probably we'll need to apply blur then. Let's do, let's do the HQ. HQ blur. We will adjust it. Like so, get some interesting shapes going. Something like that. Let's see, yeah, right. So then we got this, and then our next our next task will be to to split them. As you can see, the, um, it's recurring quite often. If you analyze the pictures, um, those large islands, they quite often are split in two colors. So let's do that. How can we achieve it? Um, I can show you two methods. Um, one is a bit faster than the other, but they're both uh, valid. So one will be, let's first pick the color for lighter brown. Pick, we get this. Okay, we can as well make a blend. So we go to histogram scan, the one that the produced the mask for us. And we create a node called a non-uniform uh, blur. This one, non-uniform blur. Okay. And we connect this mask in both uh, inputs. Okay. By default, it's going to blur it because this is what this node mostly does. Uh, but through some exploration, I found out that um, it not only blurs, but they actually create an interesting um, masks. I say I can create the double mask, a triple mask out of um, black and white image. So uh, the way to do it is you simply this uh, samples and you see samples and blades at the bottom. You you drip drop them down right to one. Samples to one and blades to one, right? And uh, you see it starts to introduce like a great value here, a gray value. So the more you increase the intensity, the more it displaces it, you see, in here. Like that. And also with a, if you move the angle, you can, you can control See the the angle of this of this mask, so it's pretty cool. Uh, so what we can do is grab that and let's say create a, um to create a mask of it. So we select the levels and um, we want obviously black and white only. So what we do is just um, we're going to eliminate the the grays, 
from here, right? And then we plug it into, into opacity, right? So this is what it does. Basically, you see how it just split it, split the silent in two. And now we can just adjust how we want it. Like say, let's, let's say we want to create a kind of a shadow effect. You see just the border, it's pretty cool. You can just do that or increase it even more to create more, more interesting patterns or play, play with an angle as well, like this. You know, I quite like this one, for example. Uh, on a, another way you can do it um, is simply, for example, you grab, um, you duplicate this histogram scan, right? And what you do is um, you reduce the position of this one and you plug it in here, right? So you see by reducing the position, we start to introduce the, the secondary color, but it introduces always in the center of the shape. So if you want to displace it, you want to you know, offset it to the side, you will have to use one of the transforms, you know, and like move it, move it to the side like this, right? So these are uh, these two methods that I have. Personally, prefer this one is it's a bit more uh, natural to me to to what I see in here. So I'll keep it like that for now. Right. So let's uh, let's move on. So next, we will create those little uh, islands in, that we see here. First, we start with this little like. Well, it's it's kind of medium size, um, say like a pebble, right? Um, and then we will build the small ones around it. Yeah. So let's start with that. For that, I'm going to use um, a tile sampler. And we're going to switch to Paraboloid. So let's say 16 by 16 is fine for me for now, All right? So let's just, um, let's introduce the histogram scan here, increase the contrast again to see the, those shapes, make a blend. We go into the opacity and let's pick our, our color. Gonna be, I'll pick it from here. I'll pick that. We connect. Right. Okay. So I did that just in order for me to see what is actually happening, you know, so we can see real time what's happening on the screen. So we can make adjustments, right, based on that. So Let's get rid of those perfect circles that we just created. And um, let's start making small tweaks here. So with the sizes, um, we can do this size random on an X and Y. Okay, then we can do also the scale random to introduce some variation in, in scale to those things. Okay, then we got our our position random. Well, let's move it. Position random to get rid of those of this grid that we have. All right. Then we do rotation random as well. And we don't need so many uh, of those spots. Let's apply mask random to to get rid of some of them. Let's see. Let's take a look at our photo. You see, it's like just we have them in in some in some places. Yeah. So we will keep. Let's see. Maybe even 
increase this mask more, something like this. Yeah. All right, cool. Now, they're still quite, quite perfect. Let's, uh, we need to warp them for sure. As you can see, they're quite wavy. So let's do that. We can go for, for warp and use, um, let's see, one of the Gaussian noises. So they're quite good for that. Let me start with the Gaussian noise. Might be too big. Let's see, uh, increase the, increase the scale. Right. So not so much. We don't want to destroy our shapes completely. So I want to give them a slight warp. So let's be careful with the intensities. This warp tends to be quite harsh. But introducing, yeah, perfect. Something like this. To disturb the shapes, you know. Well, maybe we, well, let's, let's do another one. Warp. And then this time, it's going to be even smaller frequency. What we can do also is just use the same Gaussian noise, actually. Use transformation and divide it by two. So it increases the, the frequency of it, something like that. Place it into warp. And again, it's going to be super, super small value. Let's see, add another zero. It's like barely noticeable. Three. We can dial it back. Adjust it. One. Yeah. Okay. So we have uh, we have these shapes now, and. Now, let's build the smaller shapes, right? That form around those bigger ones. So how can we do it? Um, we will need to use this, um, some sort of um, mask again, so that um, the smaller shapes get attached only to the, to the bigger ones, right? But there's nothing, there's, there are areas of rest, right? We don't wanna fill it up completely. Like he, in here as well, there, there are areas of rest, and then there's area, the areas of a uh, high, higher frequencies. So we want to recreate that. So I would say for this, we can again duplicate this tile sampler, but this time we're going to increase the um, the amounts. So this time we're gonna. Go for maybe like 40, see 40 by 40. This kind of amounts. Change you change the random seat as well. All right. Again, we will need this histogram scan. So uh, just borrow it from here. Plug it. Okay. And then let's create the blend to see what actually happens. So we use for that we use the same color just for now, All right? So I see it populated the my screen here, but now it's it's all over the place, right? It does regardless of the position of the our medium chunks. Um, so we need to take care of that. So what we can do with um, with this tile sampler? Well, let's see. For now, um, go back to position random and bring it back. So we're there on the grid as a starting point. And I will take this histogram scan, right? And I'm going to run um, ambient uh, fusion node on it. So ambient occlusion will create this shadow around the around my spots. Okay, this is what I want, 
and I can use this as a mask in my second tile sampler so that it um, it spawns my smaller shapes just around the around the bigger spots. That's the idea here. That's what we're trying to do. If we do the let's do the level to to invert that. Right, so we can adjust here. So you see, creating those kind of masks here can increase the the white value as well. Something like that. Let's see. And let's plug this into mask map input of the tile sampler. In here. All right. So let's go down. You see here we have our mask map threshold appearing. So if we increase this um, mask map threshold, you see if I start to increase it, the um, only the um, small spots that are close to the bigger ones appear on my screen. And if I have it at zero, we are back to square one where we just see a grid. So what I'll do now is I'll decrease the mask random. Right. So we have more spots in here. Okay, so you see the the shapes are appearing around uh, only around the, the mask. Okay, and then the next thing is we need to get rid of that grid. So for that we can use the let's see our position random. All right, so we have a position random. There you go. Let's see, look at the reference. Seem to be a bit bigger, so we will increase the size. Okay. Just the position random, 0 0.2. Okay. So now we need to tackle now another little problem here is you see some of those uh, little little spots they are actually like merging together with uh, with the bigger shapes we we want to avoid that as in here they are quite separated well almost touching in some cases but still more separated so let's let's handle that so how can we do it um, see in here. Mask starts, you see this mask starts right on the edge of my of my shape and that's what causes it to merge. So what we can do is just to extend the mask a little bit, the borders of the mask. So they will not be touching together, you know what I mean? So it's, um, you can go to histogram scan here and apply blur so apply the blur you see so with the blur it actually blurs outwards so it extends the mask and then after that we can just do the scan again we can move the contrast you see how the scan we can increase the the outside of the mask all right Okay, and now what we have here, we're just gonna create a blend. And we're going to subtract this mask. So you see the difference, we can even extend it more. Like let's like so. And as I do that, 
if you look at the on my viewport let's say like in in, in this spot here right where there's um these two shapes that are merging as i increase the position see the closest ones the closest spots start to, to the bigger one start to disappear so that's the that's the idea here behind this right so we do that okay so next um we're going to warp it a little bit the same as before let's get rid of those perfect circles we can even just duplicate this right like this Control D. Okay. Then we reapply. Okay. Let's see. Let's, let's move some values in the scale. Okay, warp. Gonna try a few combinations. Maybe it's too much distortion here. Just want a slight warping here. Okay, so let's create the secondary color that goes that like wraps around those spots. I will pick it from here. There you go. And we can use this method that I showed you before. Okay. So these are the, the big spots. Right, so we plug it. In here we need to adjust now the intensity because it displays it too much. We just need um we just need a bit of a change like this on um on the side. Something like this. Okay, and here as well, we will have to use another level. I'm going to actually, there is a quicker way to do that. So if I use histogram, histogram shift, I'll be able to isolate just this little, little bits of information like that and then after that I will use level like this right so plug it here Yep, and it creates this like a separation, all a shadow effect that we see in this reference. We can always play here with the angle and intensity to achieve the desired look. Are we going to repeat that? Just gonna recycle it by duplicating. And uh, let's do the same here. Again, because they are much smaller in scale, we'll have to make some adjustments here, especially 
when it comes to when it comes to intensity. So we don't need to be as aggressive here, just a little bit to the side. Instagram shift. And then let's adjust that. Now we do another blend. Use this color. Right. Okay. Is um. I'm going to increase the contrast of the mask a bit, so they're all on the same level. Okay, let's take a look at the picture. Yep, there you go. In this final video, I would like to show you the the power of the system that we built um, in the first video. So let's take a look. So my idea is to show you guys how you can build uh, patterns similar to, to this uh, with the system that we created in the first video. This is the power of designer because it's built in a procedural way. Now it will allow us to quickly generate not just camouflage patterns, but um, any other patterns that you wish since we already built the rules. All we need to do is now just to plug another type of noise and that will allow us to create completely different variation of the pattern. So let's let's see how we can do something like this. I don't really know why I call it experimental. I think it just sounds cool. So we are in designer and um, this is the camouflage woodla woodland camouflage from the first video, right? So what we're going to do now is uh simply replace the first note and uh, we can try various noises to see what we can come up come out with i will show you maybe two three two three four examples so for example we can use this note note called creased okay so all I do now is I'm going to replace clouds too with crest. Okay. And now I'm going to histogram scan and I will just increase the position, right? There we go. So you see we're starting to get some uh, interesting patterns. So we go to crest. In here we can play, you know, with scale, with uh, with disorder, with warp intensity. So you know, very quickly, it allow us to create a completely different pattern. I don't know, similar, I kind of like a um, animal print pattern. And um, all you gotta do here is just to replace the the colors to come up with a. Um, different color scheme you know i believe this is this is how i built uh, this pattern here just with this system and it's very quick so we can try another one for example this is this one is a very interesting one i like to use this reaction diffusion mainly to build uh, coral reefs, but we can use it in this case as well. So blur, we don't really need. Clouds. So yeah, clouds. Clouds two is fine. Then followed by reaction diffusion. Uh, we can play here with a radius, right? Let's see if I crank this up, get lower frequencies, and 
with the clouds too, I can also play with the scale or disorder. Or you can plug different type of clouds or anything similar to clouds and reaction diffusion node will convert it into this kind of kind of warm warm type of shapes, you know? So you can do that. We can also try crystal. The crystal one node. So place it in histogram scan. Histogram scan. Increase the position. I'm going to drop. I'm going to drop the scale of it. And here, what I really like is uh, those borders that are in black. So I would like to isolate them. So Instagram select is really good for that. So I'm just gonna move the move the position here. You know, I play with the range as well or contrast. Let's see. That, that gives us something something unique. Not necessarily a military type of pattern, but it could be, for example, to use something generate an interesting, um, you know, interesting image that so you could be using fashion. You just to play with the range and histogram scan here. To create something like that. And again, replace the color so you get something unique. You know, this is this is how I built this pattern here. Let's take a look at this one. So what I'll do here is we will have to generate the pixelated look first. This is what we did in the second video. Remember, it was just um, and clouds, one of the clouds, followed by Instagram scan. And we had to drop the resolution a lot of Instagram scan to 128, at least to by 128. followed by transformation and we had to go back to relative to parent to bring back our 2k resolution and change the filtering to to nearest all right so maybe let's give let's do clouds one it's a bit higher frequency like this Right, so then with um, with the clouds one, I can also change the resolution, and this is what I basically did for for this first pattern. I did something similar to this. You see, the uh, trying different different resolutions. And then playing with the position, changing the colors again, you know. Yeah, just try different combinations. You know, we can do something like this, you know. Pretty fun. So yeah, don't be afraid to play with different um, different setups. Try different combos. Um, have a look at all the. Um, a uh, wide range of uh, noises that's available in designer just plug it in simply and see what you can come up with you'll be surprised